What's going on, guys? Uh, I recently got a game. Actually, I just got two games. But in this video, we're only going to talk about the, the one game I got. Um, I've, I've wanted this game for several years. And uh, I was actually debating on making a fake one. But I actually got a real, genuine, dedicated cabinet. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna build it, and in this and this is gonna be the beginning of a series. I'm probably gonna make a good three parter or so of my my journey restoration. Also, check out this. I ha I paid a whopping twenty dollars for that giant UFO. Isn't that badass? And there's like that color color changing uh, spinny. I don't know what the hell you call it. Five bucks for that. Couldn't pass it up. That was worth twenty five bucks. But, uh, okay, so let me show you guys, now, th now let me show you guys this cabinet. This, this was, someone converted it to Super Basketball. Of all the damn games you can convert a journey to, someone converted it to Super Basketball. What a shame. Alright, let me show you guys the cabinet. Okay, this is it. Um, look, now, there, somebody put a wood veneer on this thing, and uh, I ripped it off on this side. And you can kind of see the um, liquid nail somebody put on the cabinet. Look at this terrible liquid nail. And as I peeled it off, some of the edges came up came up with it. So I'm going to have to do some body work on this cabinet. And it's a shame because you can tell before they put the, the laminate on, it was actually a perfect cabinet. But some idiot thought it would be really cool to put the laminate on it. Here's some right here. I still have to, still have to pick away at some of the laminate. But uh, let me show you uh, the back. Uh, you, you know, <clears throat> my wife. I bought this. Bought this empty cabinet. Uh, well, it had super basketball in it. But I bought this cabinet for my boss. And he just got he just got a game in. Paid seventy five dollars for it. Okay. And um, my wife. You know what, what? What it was dropped off at the warehouse, and my wife walked by it, and she says, "Jason, there's a journey out there," and and I said, "Bullshit! There ain't no journey out there. I know there's not a journey out there." You know what I mean? I walked. I, I even walked by it, and for some reason in my mind, it was halfway covered with pinballs up to here, and I thought, "Oh, that's a Stargate." So, <laughs> so I went to tell my wife. I says, "You're full of shit," and she's, "No, no, no. There's a journey out there." And so, so I went out there to say, to see, to, to basically say, see, I told you so. And no, it really was a journey. So, <laughs> so let me, uh, let me oh, unscrew, yeah. let me unscrew this here. It still has the journey upright um, tag right here. And here's the information for cleaning the tape cassette player. And that looks like dip switch information and. And then there's some random paperwork. What's this say? Manual request card. Different crap like that laying in here. But unfortunately, they stripped it. It's gone. I do have the power brick. And the power supply does work because they actually hacked the harness and wire and used this power supply to run super basketball. And check this out. Got a bonus. There's, there's a, a Monroe on the bottom of the... Uh, cabinet <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> so first things first I'm gonna have to uh, remove all this look at this that's all gonna be fixed at least there there is zero water damage on this thing it's just been beat I'm gonna have to remove all of this uh, liquid nails and I'm gonna show you guys a trick on how to do it okay let me tell you guys what I'm gonna do now um, if you don't, if you do not, or if you care about the finish that's underneath it, if you ever encounter an arcade machine that has that has an, has an overlay, you know, like the like the countertop material, for it's a formica or whatever you want to call it, on top that's been overlaid over your machine, if you care about the finish that's underneath it, that's what I want you to do. Mineral spirits, mineral spirits removes liquid nails wonderfully. But if you do not care about what's underneath this glue, which I don't care in this predicament, because I'm going to end up having to repaint this whole cabinet, I'm going to do a lot of body work, um, there's nothing for me to save here. 
If you do not care, you have an even faster method that removes liquid nail. Xylene. And <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get a little bit of xylene, pour it on this rag here. And let's see if I can get something in video here. Okay, we got a little spot here. Let's let it sit. And bam! We're eating it. Taking that glue off. I got a little credit card deal here. See that liquid nail just disappears. And it's, it's sad because someone had to put that um, formica over top of this. It would have been uh, almost savable because when I took that stuff off, um, and it took a lot of the cabinet wood with it. But there's a whole section here I'm getting off right now. The xylene is pretty much drying up on the rag. So a lot of this is actually friction now since I softened up the glue. But look at that, man. It's, it's attacking it. And to be honest, uh, the xylene in this situation is not eating the paint, but it can. So honestly, xylene is the quick and easy way out, but it could damage your cabinet if you really want, if you really care about what's underneath it. Just get that mixed in a little bit. I'm gonna get my credit card deal here. Speedy rewards card. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna remove all this glue, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple tricks. You know, there's there's a few things that I've done for years that I haven't seen anyone else do, and I think people should know about it. Whether you like it or not, give me your opinion on the give me a comment on the bottom. I don't care. I'll take a constructive ah, criticism. <laughs> but I'm going to show you guys a trick how to get this cabinet smooth and flat that I've never seen before. I've done it many times and it works beautifully. But let me go ahead and let me turn this camera off and I'm going to go ahead and get all this crap off. Well, I laid the cabinet on its side here. And as you can see, when the this uh, formica here was pulled off, see how I have this formica laying here? When that was pulled off, uh, I left many, 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 many pock marks all over this cabinet. So before I, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to fill all this stuff in. But before I do, I'm going to get some 60 grit, and I'm going to do the 60 grit's pretty rough. It's pretty, pretty, uh pretty tough here but I'm gonna go ahead and sand this entire cabinet down with a little bit of 60 grit no I'm not gonna go nuts but I am going to uh, fill this there's a little divot here a little nick on the corner I'm gonna fill that in with Bondo and I'm gonna fill this here with, with some Bondo also and I've already removed the T molding and uh, yeah so I'm basically gonna go I'm gonna try to try to do a lot around the edges or a little bit around the edges just to make sure that uh, in case there was any swelling that it will be flat on the edges also but this is there's really zero swelling on this cabinet but I'm just gonna go around and sand the whole thing with some 60 grit okay you know I was thinking about um, using some fiberglass resin and uh, mixing it up and and doing it across the, the cabinet and uh, <clears throat> I decided not to that was going to be my trick. You don't really hear people talk about that very often, but this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use some Bondo. Um, just going to kind of throw a piece of uh, insulation down there. And, uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm going to scoop up some of this Bondo. Now, um, I also, sometimes I'll thin this. Um, 
Okay, now, now the reason the reason why I didn't want to go with the um, resin this time because I want to try to do both sides tonight, and the resin seems to take longer to set up. And the bondo sets up a little quicker than just plain old resin, at least in my experience. Um, <clears throat> now you can also mix some fiberglass resin with this bondo first. And then, uh, and then mix them together and it'll thin it out. But once again, it'll take a little longer to uh, set up. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Bondo route. I'm going to do a skim coat over, over this entire cabinet because uh, there's little uh, pock marks and, and holes and stuff uh, all over this cabinet from when I pulled off the uh, 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 Formica. So I'm going to mix a little bit of Bondo here. And uh, let's mix this, mix this stuff up. Now a lot of people will stir Bondo. And uh, you can, it works. But I'm not going to, and I'll tell you why. Um, a, lot of guys, a lot of guys do it, but you probably shouldn't. And the reason why you don't want to stir a Bondo is because it uh, puts air bubbles in the Bondo. And as you smooth it out, it'll take more working time, and possibly more coats in the end, to get rid of all those pinholes created by the air bubbles. So if you mix your Bondo like this on a board, you have less bubbles inside the Bondo. So I'm going to mix this sucker up. You're working against time because the stuff sets up kind of quick. But uh, I got it right in my thumb. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to move this over. I'm basically going to skim coat the entire cabinet to fill in all of this crap. Keep in mind, you don't have to mix up enough to do the entire cabinet in one shot. I'll do multiple sections, you know what I mean? But I'm going down here. I'm kind of just getting it on there so I can then scrape it right off. I really wish somebody hadn't have covered this cabinet in that I don't know if I'm using the right word. I believe it's called Formica. I wish someone hadn't have covered this cabinet in Formica or whatever that countertop laminate is called. <clears throat> they would have left it alone, it would have been great. Yes. Keep in mind, try to get as leave as little on here as possible because you gotta sand it all off. You can see at the sand marks where somebody sanded it are coming through now. That's crazy. <laughs> so I'm gonna get over here. We've got almost half the cabinet. One application, that ain't too bad. Mm -mm. It's basically just going over all those little pinholes and it's just starting to set up so I'm done. Once it starts to get just a hair, a hair solid, um, stop. It's better to work it in while it's wet. So <clears throat> let, me let, let me let this set up. I'm going to mix some more stuff and we're going to do the other side. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other side. Mix a little more of this, my, this hardener here. Now I clean this knife with acetone afterwards. Acetone wipes Bondo off really well. Even if it's uh, mostly hardened. Now mix this up again.
Okay. More Bondo. We got a storm outside right now. Thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. It's uh was pretty crazy a bit ago. Had some weird warm weather. Okay, let me get rid of this. Keep it there, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Stuck my setup. Eh, not yet. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, well let me let that sit for, I don't know, <clears throat> half an hour, and then I'll sand all this stuff down. Alright, I got some 60 grit. I'm going to do a light sand, and then I'm going to finish with a, with the, you know, then I'm going to move on to 100, and then 220 or so, and maybe hit it with some 330, 300, or whatever it is. And uh, I'll probably be ready to paint, so let's hit it with some 60, just to knock off all the edges, you know. Oh yeah, that's definitely doing it. I'm pretty much gonna... I think I'm probably gonna sand it so you pretty much don't see Bondo. It'll just be in the, uh, in the divots, you know. My beautiful wife is sanding. And, uh, right now we're actually wet sanding. Now, keep in mind, it's, it's not always a good idea to wet sand with, uh, with, uh, look at my hands. It's not always a good idea to wet sand with water because, especially when you're getting ready to, to uh, paint with oil-based paint. So, it may sound crazy, but, uh, sometimes we will wet sand with mineral spirits. And this stuff will, will evaporate away, and uh, it won't it won't bind the sandpaper so much. She's using th she's using 320 right now. I think it was 320, whatever it was. So show the bottom of that. Show the bottom of the paper. Makes the paper last a lot longer. You can see it's binding up some here, but that paper has had a lot of use on it so far. So yeah, uh, if you've never heard of it before, I don't know if I if I invented it or someone else invented it before me, but. Wet sand with oil. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> but yeah, we are just about got to do a little more sanding up here. And it's going to be... I mean, some of this stuff, I don't care if you see a little bit of it. I don't care. I mean, you see, the important thing is when you, when you put your finger across it, if you feel an imperfection, then there's an imperfection. Trust your fingers. Don't trust your eyes. But uh, yeah, so... Gonna hurry up and sand this, then we're gonna dry off this mineral spirits. I'm gonna put a first coat of paint on this sucker. Well, we stood it up on its end, it's all cleaned, we sanded the hell out of it, and then we hit it with some xylene to make the uh, mineral spirits evaporate quicker. And it's dry as a bone, and it is nice and smooth. And all these things in the camera that's smooth, it's just a gloss, glazed smooth. So, now, we have to do this 
nightmare of a side. This is just, we've only removed the residue and you can see there's a bunch of uh, loose crap here. And So yeah, there's some more residue right there I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. it didn't all come off. So we gotta take all this crap off and then do what we did to over there on this side. So I'm gonna do that and I'll probably meet you back up when I start painting. Well, this side is sanded, and uh, I'm not. I'm, uh, I wanted to show you something before before I skip to paint. I was planning on skipping right to paint on this video, but uh, this side is a little worse than the other side. This had some minor water damage all across the bottom, and it's now sanded flat, of course. But down here, now this is that fiberboard they made. They, they use this this type of wood with Journey, of course, and they used it with. Cubert and some of the other Gottliebs, um, you know, uh, and Galaga, for example. But uh, this was water damage, and it's soft. I can actually kind of, you see how I can kind of uh, pick that up? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, we're zoomed in, and I can kind of move that if the camera would focus. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, I'm not going to Bondo over a soft sponge. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get the saw. I'm going to cut it right out. We don't want that soft stuff there. We're going to cut it out. Right there. And I'm going to get my, my planer. I'm going to go ahead and hit that a little bit. Now, now I'm down to solid material and solid material. Yeah, you do not want to just leave that crap on. Now, there's a couple methods you can do at this point. If you really wanted to, you could Bondo right over this. I don't suggest it, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, what I suggest you do, I want this done tonight. I want a journey done tonight. This should be in paint tonight. That's my goal, okay? But um, what you should do is get epoxy resin, two part epoxy resin, and gloss this up and let it absorb in. Yeah, that's one way. Another method is to use wood hardener and put it in here, but that's gonna take an entire day all on its own just to dry. Uh, another, another method <coughs> I wouldn't suggest on this specific cabinet, but I have drawn, I have uh, put brad nails in the sides of something like this. So when you bondo, the, now the bondo is surrounding a nail, so it's in. And another method is to use, um, they, they sell drywall joint tape, which is made from fiberglass mesh. So it's like a fiberglass mesh, and you can actually build things up with, and cover them with bondo, and they're much stronger. Uh, I've actually been known to, to get to carve a gouge a little bit, and have the tape join into it. But what I'm going to do, you know what, the more I think about it, it's bothering me. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix a, a little bit of fiberglass resin, just a little bit, in the Bondo. So the Bondo is soupier, and then, then I'm going to have to go ahead and do it. So let me, let, me, uh, let me show you guys what to do to get these corners to be right. All right, I'm going to... I do this now and now and, now and again. Um, I'm going to drive a screw, just a short little screw, right here. Okay, that's going to go through this and into the new piece, of, the the other piece of wood on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and screw that in. This, see, I'm in. A, I, I want this to get done soon. I want this to get done tonight. And when the bondo hardens around this screw, it will get, and it's going to be obviously below the level of the Bondo. When the Bondo hardens around this screw, it's going to have one more thing to hold it in. Okay, so this is something else I'm going to do. I got a piece of cardboard right here. I bent it to a 90 degree angle, okay? Now I'm going to get a piece of double sided sticky tape like this. I'm going to stick it right here, just like that. I'm going to bend this around here. OK, 
Okay, so now I move the camera. That's like that. See if I can get a better angle. Eh, good enough. I see the the, the uh, camera is right in the way of the light. But you know what? You know what? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some light going on here. This is this is too dark. Okay. Mix a little hardener here. Okay. I'm just gonna basically just squeeze this crap in here. I'm gonna be wasteful and just make a huge pile of this crap and not worry about sanding. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. Okay, so it's sat here for about five, six minutes. So I'm gonna get this double-sided tape and the cardboard off. I have myself a razor blade here. I'm going to just cut top layer of this off. I don't wanna get it too close because I have a tool for this. This is just to save a little bit of a uh, sanding. I have my planer. And I can plane it right off. And there we go. So you don't have to uh, you don't have to go nuts with the sandpaper if you have the right tools. This thing's only like uh, six bucks, and uh, geez, imagine how much sandpaper you would have had if you would have screwed up and had to keep going. All right, so uh, I'm probably gonna probably gonna go ahead and come back when I do some painting. Oh wow! Look at that. It's brown. Why is it brown? Why is this brown? This is this is brown paint. This is brown paint. This is brown. This is freaking brown. This is brown paint. Well, luckily they gave me blue paint. And uh, honestly, I, I, I really don't like um, rolling a finish on. But I'm doing it right now. I have a couple reasons I'm doing it right now. First off, I want this done. I want this done soon. Second reason is the paint booth is not heated. So in the winter time, it's like, you know, you got to have heat when you when you when you're painting, when you're spraying. And uh So anyways, I'm going to roll it. But there is a way to get a rolled on finish that looks great. No matter what, a rolled on finish will never look as good as well it could. It would take a lot of work. Generally, a rolled-on finish does not look as good as a sprayed-on finish. But what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm, I'm kind of laying it on, this is kind of thin still, this is barely covering it, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm rolling it on, and then I'm going to wet sand it. And then roll it on again, maybe wet sand again. And the very last coat I'll do will be this paint thinned out. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cover this cabinet and the very last coat will be thin. I'm probably going to thin it with acetone or something like that. But when you do the last coat real thin, um, you lose a lot of the roller marks. And I'll probably wet sand it clear up to 600, man. I'll probably go nuts. But Another reason that I'm doing this, rolling it on, is because since I'm rolling it on, I will be sanding, 
and there's a few little tiny imperfections that I'm not happy with, but I realize if I roll it, I will remove those imperfections. So let me go ahead and roll this on and uh, I'll show you the finished ordeal here. Well guys, it's painted. Um, <clears throat> I thought, thought I better mention um, One Circuit. It's a YouTube channel called One Circuit. Check it out. And if you don't know anything about John's Arcade and you're watching me, check out John's Arcade. He's got a million videos. Um, also, uh, some of you guys might might wonder why I have why I did not use primer, and I'll tell you why. Um, I am planning on making multiple multiple coats, and this whole first coat is going to be sanded. Um, and the reason you want primer on wood is so the paint doesn't absorb into the wood. And honestly, I don't mind if the paint absorbs into the wood at this point. This is not going to be a one coat, you're finished ordeal for me. I'm going to go ahead and sand this. This, this might be three, four coats but by, by the time it's done. And, uh, you know, so in other words, I'm not worried about a primer stopping it, stopping the paint from absorbing into the wood. I'm okay with it. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> and, and, you know, this first coat is not the best looking coat. Uh, but... You know, once I sand it, it'll, it'll be it'll be just fine. But uh, this would be part one. Check out part two whenever I do it. See, uh, I'm probably going to get the marquee, the bezel, and the control panel overlay from uh, Joe Sabo. Um, uh, and yeah, so uh, I'm kind of short on money. So whenever I whenever I can pony up the money, I'm going to go ahead and get the side art and all that. Oh no 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 no! I only mentioned this. Um, Jeff Oler, uh, Arcade Hollywood, has a YouTube channel called Arcade Hollywood. He's giving me the side art. I'm curious why he has two sets of side art, because he recently had a, a journey project himself. And so I'm going to get side art from him, and so all I need to get is control panel overlay, bezel, and marquee. So, um, tell you what, if you guys like the video, please subscribe, give me one of these. Uh, have a good day.